nature. Of all nature and no creative thing. Of all wisdom. Above all wisdom. And all the ways of man. Yes, you are here. thought of you and me above all powers. He thought of you and me above all treasures, above all wisdom, above all nature, above all all created things, above diamond and gold, above reputation, above fame, above everything. He thought of you and me. power of God. You lived to die. Rejected and the Lord. Like a rose. Trampled on the ground. You took the fall for me. And you thought of me above race, above tribes, above everything, above America, above Asia, above Africa, above treasures, above everything, above, 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 above Hollywood, above everything, above Facebook, above Instagram, above views, above likes and loves, above, above everything. Say a more kind of glory in Jesus' name. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Let's put our hands together. Thank you very much. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nakayana Poya Santa Gloria. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we surrender. We surrender our lives to you. Above everything. Above our fears. Above our vain glories. You are God. Above our selfishness. You are God. Above our strengths and weaknesses. You are God. Rokaya Mesa. Be glorified. Be 
magnified, be lifted high in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm going to talk about surrender, total surrender. I talked about it on the day of Christmas uh, last year. But this is part two. Because this is the culture God wants us to have as a church. Amen? We talked about the new dress code last week. How do you dress in the presence of God? And we did not talk about your nice suit and shoes and stuff. We talked about spiritual stuff that you need to remove and put on. What do you need to put on? And one of them was love. Love for the other person. Sanctification ministry, we are at a stage where you really need to be ready with your heart. With what God is about to do. With what God is going to do. Amen? Amen! So I want us to understand some of the stuff from the beginning. Number one. Praise God, this is New Year tax, tax season, right? And some of us pastors, we are self-employed. Well, we have an employer. Amen? My boss. Jesus Christ. Amen? This is his church. I'm just a servant in his church. Amen? Jesus is my, my boss. Now, if Jesus is my boss, and you are God's children, it means you are children of my... You are going to understand total surrender today. You are children of my boss. Now, if Jesus is your boss too, can you tell the person next to you, you are a daughter of my? Aha! You are a son of my? Do we understand that? Christ is your boss. Christ is my boss. Is the owner of the kingdom. And we are workers in his kingdom. Everybody in that kingdom who is a child of God is the child of your boss. So far so good? Now when you have a mate at home, <laughs> the mate knows this is the boss child. When they ask them to do something for you, when the, your mom says, hey, can you bake a cake for my son? Does the maid say no? Does it mean he likes to do it? Not necessarily. Amen? When you bring those clothes, hey, Africa, 16-year-old girl, they still give your clothes to the maid to wash for you. Hey, Yahweh. The maid is like, even these old girls, I have to wash their clothes. But he's still going to do it. Because this is the, the boss daughter. Does that make sense? Even if they don't want to, sometimes America is good. Because you are the carpenter, the maid, the gardener. You are everything. But in Africa, people take advantage of those. Amen? So now, the way you treat your maid in Africa... That's how you should be treated in the kingdom of God. Because God is your boss and everybody is a child of? See how you're responding coldly? Aha! But that's true though. That's the real surrender to God. Understanding, like Paul says, I am now a slave huh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Whatever God tells me, I will do. Amen? So that's number one. Everybody is your boss child. 
Do you think as a pastor I'm always happy with everything you do? No. Sometimes I'm not happy. I'm upset. But if I want to act on my anger, the boss is looking at me like, that's my daughter. Did you hear what I just said? Uh -huh. Sometimes you are upset with me. But God looks at you like, that's my servant. I love God. He makes things very easy, but very complex and very difficult sometimes. Amen? But we are all servants of the Almighty God. So everybody in this church is your boss child. And if God tells you to do something for them, as respect to your boss, you are going to do it. Because God wants to destroy selfishness. If you surrender to God, even your prayers, God can do whatever God wants to do with it. Because you give it all to God. Oh, I pray. Because I pray, you need to do this for me. No, you, are, you, are, you have not surrendered. I pray, use my prayer as you please. Amen? I remember when I was a little kid like this. We were at the house that was next to Papa Jonathan's house. In the castle. But at that time, Jonathan was not born yet. So our house, in the back was a little bush. And they used to grow flowers. All that area. I've never seen snakes like I saw them when I was a kid. There were so many snakes. So our gardener, his name was Raymond. He came there to work in the garden and clean the, the compound. But he had another skill. He was good at catching snakes. So every time somebody in the house will scream, Remo! We know there's a snake somewhere. Amen? If you are a servant of God, he can use any skills of yours the way he pleases. Ah. Are you beginning to understand? So, <laughs> don't say, why am I the only one praying in this church? Because it's a gift that was given. Just like every time we saw a snake, we scream, Remo! And he made it a little funny. Every time you call him Remo for a snake, he jumps for it. Hey, guapi! Amen. What we loved about Raymond was the joy he had to go catch a. Eh? He made it excited. It was like you're watching a drama or a sketch or a movie. So to the point that we even wanted to meet a snake so we can call. <laughs> Amen. So if God gave you the power of prayer, every time there will be a snake, God is going to call you. Does that make sense? I'm just giving examples, but I need to mention some people's names. I'm not saying this is true. Don't go out there and say, the pastor said. <laughs> Remember, that person is a child of? Of the boss. So let's say these three women here are prayer warriors. Okay? That night, Mama Fifi is being attacked at 2 a.m. It's like they see the serpent. God will scream, Raya! Wake up! Does that make sense? Pray for mama. 
you like, I didn't sleep on Monday. I was praying all night for Mama Vivi. Don't complain, no, because Tuesday, Damulo was here snakes at night. Raya! Amen. Amen. You are a servant of? It doesn't matter how many times we see snake during the day. We are going to call Raymond. Whether he was stealing things in the garden or he was washing the car, he will stop and jump and go up. Raymond. Amen. When you surrender to God, your gift does not belong to you. God will use it whichever way God wants. So far so good? I cannot complain. God, why am I the only one doing deliverance all the time? But <laughs> Huh? Do you want God to remove that gift? Ah, you see? Why am I the only one giving a church all the time? Oh, you want God to close the the tap of blessings? So just give oh, to the boss. If your gift is giving, every time there's need in the kingdom, they will call. Isn't that what you do to your maid in Africa? He has a full house to clean. Papa Kabea, when they were to Sukari. He comes back, he's about to clean your living room. Papa Kabea, when they were to Ah, you guys. But when God does that to you, Toro, surrender. Isn't it good to be served? But can you serve? God wants you to know that in this church we all serve God by serving each others. Ekeyama Kosaire Koyame Number two you need to break that selfish mentality of the world. Jesus was thinking of you and me above everything. It is true, and I'm going to tell you the truth. Our human nature, we enjoy feeling superior to others. Am I lying? Do you know the world is in trouble today? Why? Do you know why? Because traditions are being confused. And I'm not attacking anybody. I'm just saying the truth. In America, for example, if you wanted to be rich, okay, because there are people that do that. They go on the internet, they look at jobs that pay a lot of money. That's why Chinese will send all their kids to medical school. Because doctors have good salary, right? Engineers, lawyers, right? But today somebody goes on YouTube, do some stupid stuff. And they get 10 times the money of a doctor. Am I lying? Isn't that true? It's confusing the world. Okay? That's why everybody is so frustrated about the likes and the loves and the subscriptions on YouTube. Isn't that true? Because it's going to bring money. And if you look for everything people like the most, things that lead people to hell, I don't know, on YouTube, there's not what they call shorts, right? So short videos. Because they have studied that a human being can only watch your video for an hour. They don't have time for that. Just give them a little bit. 
So you have two minutes to think and deliver. I like this one. They say African pride. What I've noticed is that African pride is all about girls. <laughs> I've never seen a man there, number one. It's girls with what they call curves and they perform a dance like I say African pride. Do you know why? Because people are now reversing what people used to mock. People used to mock. They begin to use this against. Right? They, they used to look at Africans like nothing. Now African come and say, look at us. Look at our bodies. And everybody is liking it. It's just a reverse. As human beings, we like to feel superior to others. It becomes a problem when what we used to mock of has become the pride of those people. It becomes complicated. Because we are not ready for the other person to become equal to me. We are not ready for the other person to be above me. We want everybody to be under us. That's why God is going to surprise you. If you are not ready for that, you'll be in serious trouble. Everybody is a child of God. God will bless whoever God wants to bless. God will do whatever God wants to do. Now, and the problem now, what I want you to see is that when you surrender, not only the other person is going to be lifted up above you, but the other person is going to be lifted up above you through your prayers. Hey! <laughs> Pastor Joe okay we know Pastor Joe this I have accepted this about Pastor Joe he has this car he has this house he's got a big debt <laughs> that's okay one day Pastor Joe comes in the church and says I have a testimony to give I pay off my house now you are okay with me being <laughs> indebted you were not prepared for me not to be in debt. Your heart begins to grinch. <laughs> Am I lying? That's what human beings do. When you surrender to God, you are prepared to be happy for every person because they are your boss. And you are. So begin to treat your maid the way you want God to treat you. Did somebody hear that? Ah. I'm going to give you examples of my life. I used to have a gardener. Thank God, everybody here is African. Maybe except from those who were born here in America. <laughs> of, of African parents, but go ask them, they will tell you. We know it's a big deal for somebody from Congo to go to Europe. Isn't that so? Even the way they behave. Just look at yourself when you go back home. <laughs> Here you are suffering, praying to God, crying every day. My life, oh, my life, oh. When you go to Africa, everybody like, oh, hey, hey, hey. you are so blessed. You are. <laughs> Am I lying? You're from America. Ma, 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 ma. This is what God wants to destroy in sanctification ministry. The other person is not inferior to you. The other person is on a different stage with God. Amen? And we need to understand that. Be ready of what you are not ready. <laughs> Does that make sense? We like it when somebody's telling you, can you pray for me? I've been looking for a job. You feel good, eh? Because the other person doesn't have a job. Because it makes you feel like you made it. They didn't. 
God wants to destroy that. God wants you to feel the pain of the other person. God wants you to feel how hard it is. When Jesus look at people, Jesus will say, if he was filled with compassion. He was filled with compassion. When somebody is being thrown out of their house because they did not pay rent, you are the first one to talk and complain. You don't know what they're going through. Amen. You don't know what they're going. You don't know what is coming for them. You don't know. You should feel compassion. You should show compassion. Amen. Show compassion. Even in church, you are so used to somebody. Ah, that one. From the moment we're just going to start praying, she will fall. That's all you are used, right? And you are okay with that. I don't fall. She falls. You'll be surprised, huh? And the next retreat, instead of falling, she'll be the person giving you a revelation from the Lord. And you are not prepared for that. Because you think, I pray more. I have better gifts. I'm superior. You're not. You are just on a different stage with God. Amen? Does that make sense? We're just going to read one verse. Luke chapter 1, 38. And Mary said, Behold, I am the, the handmaid of God. <laughs> Let it be done to me. Okay? Let it be done to who? According to what? Your word. Ekeame. Now, if you don't understand, let me explain this to you. Mary is a virgin. She's being applaud for that. Just like we applaud you. We look at you. We applaud you. As so and so. So and so. Right? Who has a master's degree in here? Master's degree. Come on, put your... Master's degree, let's go. I have one too. <laughs> It's like being virgin for Mary. That was a master's degree. That was a PhD. That was everything for her. That put her up there in society. She was a virgin. But God is saying, you are going to be pregnant as a virgin. Good news. But it's going to compromise the way society sees you. Even when people think today, Kila mutu na mama yake wangu ni Maria. Eh? Do you know which Maria went through? She went through a lot. So God is saying, Mary, I'm going to do something with you that is going to glorify me but is going to crush you. And Mary says, I am your hand made. It means take my hand, do whatever you want with it. Take my womb, eh? do whatever you want with it. Take my head. Everything that I am, I give to you. I surrender. She didn't say, let it be done to the world. Let it be done to who? To me. Koshiame Santa. You know, some of you, eh, you don't want other people to succeed because then, then it can confirm your criticism. Because of what you told people about that person, you don't want that person to succeed. Because then it will prove you wrong. Ah. 
if that one makes it, what are, what are people going to think? Because I already tell so many people. Watch a villa. So I don't want this one to succeed because I've already told a lot of people this one cannot do anything in life. Did you create this one? Are you ready for what God is about to do for this one? As a matter of fact, good criticism aims the goodness of the person. Yes. Amen? If you really criticize her correctly, you would want her to succeed. Yes. But if you criticize her in your own selfishness, that's why you don't want her to succeed because it puts you on top of... Does that make sense? We don't want that in sanctification ministry. I want everybody here to see what God prepared for them. If it's bigger than what God has prepared for me, praise I don't care. Because I know your blessing is my my blessing is your But let me say this too. Today we are friends, right? We call each other. Let us continue to call each other when God blesses you. Amen. 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 We are friends today, right? We call each other, we laugh, we eat together. <laughs> when God blesses you, when God puts you up here, it's just your turn. Our other people's turn is coming too. Let's continue to be in relationship. Amen? Amen? Let's continue to be friends. The third element is to understand that the person next to you is a blessing to you. Can you tell the person next to you, you are a blessing to me? You know, when I say things like that, I always like to observe sisters and brothers. So I'm looking at Mama Denise and Mama Isabel. So Mama Denise looks and says, you are my blessing. Mama Isabel is like, you know that, right? Koya <laughs> Santa Gloria. Amen! Now I want you to look at somebody who is not of your family and tell them, you are a blessing and mean it. For two and a half years, I had, I had an eye surgery last week. For two and a half years, I came to this church, I was only seeing with one eye. Did you know? Most of you didn't even know. Oh yeah, I was only seeing with one eye, my left eye. My right eye was not seeing, I had a cataract. For two and a half, I had a cataract and an inflammation in my eye called vulva. En anglais, en français, vous le vite. So they had to make sure that they control the inflammation before they do the surgery. One day I was praying and God showed me a vision that I was driving a car and suddenly my eyes saw. So I was very sure that God was going to do it the super natural way. That's what I was expecting. But this is what God did. He removed the inflammation the supernatural way but the Korak was removed the physical what was God trying to teach me there are things God is going to do for you himself and there are things God is going to do for you through somebody God can remove the vulva but God can utilize and and the, can you imagine i went to many doctors the, the first doctors that saw my eye they say we cannot do that and then this uh, this the one i was saying lately she said you know what i know somebody who is not afraid of touching what she called a wild cataract <laughs> and 
And then I say, she said, I'm going to recommend you to that one. I said, what's her name? She said, her name is Samantha Williamson. I said, my daughter, it's going to be done. Amen. I needed a Samantha Williamson who was gifted by God for such cataracts. Don't be an enemy of the person next to you because she is the specialist of your situation. Can you tell the person next to you, you are my blessing. God can do part of it miraculously, but there's something God has already answered your prayers by putting somebody in this church. God has already answered your prayers. The problem, the problem, you are not taking the answer because you are still selfish. You don't want the other person to go further with God. Ekenama. Sakayama Santa. I prayed for so many people to go to Europe and USA. And, and at that time at South Africa as well. When I was still in Congo. You pray for people, they make it. You pray for people, they make it. I have prayed for people who have become millionaires in US dollars because brother Kevin always blesses me the right way. He said, Pastor Joe, I bless you to become a millionaire not in Congolese ranks. Diana, in US dollars. Amen. <laughs> you need to be careful. These people, they are so safe. They can say, tu seras millionaire, mais dans leur cas, ils disent en franc congolais. You need to be careful. <laughs> Amen. Shama understands what I'm talking about. Praise God. This is how I take it. If I have prayed for people and they go to Europe and America and South Africa, that's, I was very poor in Congo. So this travel grace is in me. And one day God is going to use it for myself. Right now he's still using it for me to bless If you pray for people, they become millionaires. The millionaire thing is in you. That's why be careful. Look at every person you pray for. <laughs> if every person you pray for is just so poor, maybe the poor thing is in you. You need to destroy that. Amen. If you pray for people, they don't heal, nothing good happens to them. Check yourself first. Because we give what we. That's why you cannot be jealous of blessing others. Because it is in you. I was sick. I had a brain tumor. But I'll pray for people. God will heal them miraculously. I saw a young boy who had polio, poliomyelita. At that time he could not walk. He was five or four or five years old. His mom said, can you pray for my son? He cannot walk. I have a brain tumor when they are asking me to do that. And I look at this young boy, his name was Hervé. I say, Hervé, why don't you just come to me in the name of Jesus? He stood up, uh, he walked toward me. Uh, but when God is using me to do that, uh, my own brain uh, is bleeding. Uh, my own brain uh, was bleeding. If you surrender, God is going to use your prayer to do whatever God wants to. Does that make sense? So far so good? That's why people don't tell their secrets here. Because they don't trust each other. Am I lying? You are afraid to tell your secret here. Because you don't trust that these people are your blessing. You think they will fight you. Listen to me. If I tell you I'm going to have surgery, even under anesthesia, that could pick up a prayer. Koya Santa. Don't be afraid. Tell them, tell somebody, pray for me. I have a surgery tomorrow. When you're in the surgery room, I see that person is a witch there. Even under anesthesia, I'm going to bind you in Jesus' name. Amen.
we are afraid to talk to one another because we are first of all selfish we don't trust other people we don't believe other people can be a blessing to us that's why we always want them under us we don't want them to go up and recognize what is in them maybe everything you know I watch a movie I don't know the name of the movie uh, what was the name of the movie again is it baggage is this young lady she, she works at an airplane company baggage claim she will check on YouTube on Facebook somebody wants to mingle with her she will take a flight go date this guy and then it doesn't work she hears that there's another one she takes a flight go check go watch the movie baggage claim her husband was the guy who was taking her to the airport all the time he was right there but she never saw a blessing in that person until she was disappointed everywhere else God did not put us together so that we become a problem to one another. He put us together because there's something in you, in you, in you, in you, in you, in you, and you for me. Just like there's something in me for you. Amen? He's going to do some of the things the supernatural way, but he'll do some other stuff using the gift he put in somebody through somebody so far so good I'm going to finish now there are things in life that look the same in motion if Pastor Joe told you he does not eat chicken for example and this is a chicken drum if I do this the motion is I'm eating, right? Just like maybe Ketia likes chicken more than me. You are only seeing this part and I do this. It looks like I'm about to but I'm actually passing. <laughs> My friend Fifi Nawej who is in Seattle she said, Pastor Joe even if you see somebody doing this, it doesn't mean they eat. Make sure you see them put it in there. Amen? There are things that look alike in motion. Write this down. God is not bearing you. God is planting you. Those two things look the same in motion. If you want to plant something, what do you do? You dig, you put it in. If you want to bury, it's the same motion. But the results are different. In the book of Matthew, the Bible said that God said, let the wheat and the wheat grow because they look alike. But when the fruit come up, that's when you see the, the difference. God is not burying you. God is planting you. It's the same motion when Jesus, they bring bread to him at Holy Communion. He did the same thing. He received the bread. Bless it. Broke it. Yeah. Receive it. Bless it. Break, breaks it. Gives it. Joseph, God blessed him with a vision. You are going to be superior. It was a blessing. But before he saw the blessing, he was broken into a slave. He was broken into a prisoner. And then God gave him to others. Everything God puts in you, which is a blessing, is for God now to 
break you and give you to so many people multiplication uh, is not in the blessing uh, multiplication uh, is in the breaking and when God breaks you he breaks you for many amen he breaks you for many when you surrender to God, you allow him to break you. That moment of brokenness, that's the moment things multiply. Let me say this to you. Even pagans have shown you that in movies called Cinderella, all kind of... If you say bad stuff about somebody's daughter, because you are breaking that person, you are attracting multiplication. bad girl, bad girl from the moment you begin to say bad girl, she'll get married soon Amen. I'm telling you Amen. because when you break somebody you multiply them it's a principle of God, he breaks you to give you five loaves of bread broken into five thousand pieces Today, Mama Joel, you're in sanctification ministry, probably preaching to about 60 people, 80 people. God is going to break you more for 400. He's going to break you more for 5,000. Do you understand what I'm saying? So far, God has broken me into 80. <laughs> He's still breaking. Tomorrow, He will break me for 10,000. One day he'll break me for a hundred. The multiplication is in the breaking, not in the blessing. So let, 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 me, let me give you a, a simple example. God put the gift of healing in you. At first you pray for people in your family, they heal. And then God begins to break you. And then you begin to pray for people in your church. That's why everybody tried things on, Facebook, on YouTube. It doesn't work. Because it's just not just going on YouTube. You think people just come because you put something on YouTube. It's how far have you been broken? Amen. How far? So that you can reach to so many people. It's the breaking that determines the multiplication. Total surrender. Amen. Amen. This guy is a living testimony. I was in Zimbabwe. I didn't even know at that time I was coming to America. I went back to Congo to do a training in my church, Methodist church. When I got there, you find in one church there's already four pastors and they have two months of training so there's no way you can preach <laughs> what they did to me they say we are going to select all the kids in church that don't listen that is your training amen <laughs> mama salome bashinda kana that was my training I went home I prayed I said God how am I going to deal with this git I said but I know everybody in Congo likes to travel in an English speaking country so I came back the following day I said hey all of those young people that they were given to me I'm going to teach you English at my house they came Jonathan was not for my church. His friends, so I understand that he probably had some friend that did not listen at home, invited him. Amen. And I welcomed them, I welcomed them all. Pam. Come. 
I said, we are going to learn English and we are also going to learn English songs as a way to, to learn fast. And they said, so you are going to teach us our Kelly song, uh, I, I Believe I Can Fly. And I'm like, I don't even listen to that. I don't know the song. I'm the greatest. That's, I began to know all R. Kelly songs titles. I want this. I want this. I want this. I said, no, 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 no. We are going to learn Hill song. Songs. Amen. We began to learn English, English. And then we finished that with my birthday. It was actually my birthday party. And I bless them all. I say, because I taught you English, you are going to go to English speaking. When I blessed them, I had no idea there was going to be Maryland. There was going to be sanctification ministry in Maryland. And he was going to play the key. Don't be harsh on people don't be don't look down on people maybe the person you're looking down on is your daughter's favorite mama me back out you daddy I just want to marry this guy now you see daddy no it's not gonna happen do you know why daddy's so angry because daddy already said so many bad things about that family Stop talking or start blessing because you don't know tomorrow only God knows tomorrow I never knew this guy was gonna play keyboard in my church I never knew all I did was blessing him and maybe even when he was doing all his paperwork to come to America I didn't even know maybe at that moment I was going through drought in my life not knowing why but God said, you are the one who blessed them. You are going to suffer that transition. Because when you surrender to God, he can use you any. Hey, do you understand? Total surrender. Be ready of what God is going to do for the other person. Can you tell the other person next to you and say, I'm ready to celebrate with you. looking at people. I'm ready to celebrate with you. No, no, say it properly with joy, with a smile. I'm ready to celebrate uh, with you. Listen. Even if he gets married to the sister you used to like, you never got just celebrate it, it just means she was not yours amen celebrate God will give you yours does that make sense yeah we don't want you in somebody's wedding you're like <laughs> Pastor Joker hey how are you oh, Pastor Joker God is so unfair what did God do you don't say anything it's just so unfair what did God do? Be happy for the other person in Jesus name. When God calls you to pray for somebody, don't say God, my own daughter is not married. You are asking me to, to pray for somebody's daughter. No, 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 no. He is the boss. Everybody is God's child. When the boss tells you to do something, you do it first. Then God. My daughter Luange you know Luange, she was very faithful. Every midnight prayer, she was there. Every retreat, she was there. Always there. She would come to the retreat and just fall for three days. But she used to tell me every day, can you pray for me that I get married? It was interesting though. She used to say, I need to find a husband. But Pastor Joe, please tell God, I don't want a boring husband. Uh-oh. I don't know what a boring husband looks like, but I don't know. But anyway, 
So pray with Luan's pray, pray, pray. One day, it was another girl's wedding. I got there. I saw Luan. She had lost weight. And I asked her, what happened? Are you sick? She said, no. God could not stop putting me in fasting and prayer for this wedding. She does not have a fiancé. She's been praying for one for so long. But God said, pray for this one first, that a marriage will be fine. And she did. That's love. That's what I'm talking about. To be happy for the other person. Sometimes later, somebody came and married her. To pray for Luan's wet marriage, I didn't even pray for a long time. All I say, God, remember. <laughs> Very easy to pray for her. Just remember that this girl fasted for another person's wedding. And God did it. That's the culture we want to create in sanctification ministry. When somebody comes to you, your first feeling should be compassion. Not rejection. Not judgment compassion you don't know what they're going through total surrender amen amen yes. if God say come to my house fast for two days for me come and fast though <laughs> don't say pastor Joe looks nice he always wears suit ah, ah, come and fast <laughs> does that make sense in Jesus name can we love one another? Eh? And if our church grows, can you be happy? Don't say, oh, I go there, the church is growing, Pastor Joe is getting all the credit. I don't even want credit. I want you to do what God called you to do. In Jesus' name. Don't complain. I'm the only one cleaning. Clean! Because the boss told you so. You don't know that cleaning, how God is going to use it. They just told that, that somebody was beating the drum and every beat was breaking the chain in somebody's back. Boom, boom, because they did it with love. As a matter of fact, we have drums. We need somebody to come and play drums. You need to beat that in a Jesus way. Boom, a chain breaks. Boom, a chain breaks. Boom, a chain breaks. When you play the keyboard, it's a chain. No, 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 no. The, the chain breaks. That's how we go. That's why we do it. Be ready because a lot of things in this church are not going to happen just in marriage. It's not just marriage that is going to be pa pa pa. It's all kinds of blessing pa 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 for the glory of God. God is going to accelerate. God is going to do things faster than you think. Better than you think. Be ready for the unreadiness. Be ready for what you've not seen. The Bible says, what eyes have not seen. What ears have not heard. Those are the things I'm going to do for my people. But sanctification ministry, prepare your heart. Prepare. Be happy. Be happy. Payabaka. Be happy for the other person in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. We're going to give our offering. If you come to this church, everybody's welcome. Everybody's your brother, is your sister. If they speak Swahili, learn Swahili. If they speak Lingala, learn. We are all brothers and sisters. Amen. If they speak French, speak French. If they speak English, speak. I'm going to give you an example. My Swahili is a little weird. But if I want to talk to Brother Kevin, I learned some word from the true Swahili from Kenya. Uh, one of the words is Sindivio. 